All right, so um, welcome back. Uh, time for another Emacs using Emacs video. I'm actually recording this right on the tails of the previous one, so we still have the same uh, code up. So we had our from last time highlight line, beacon mode, um, hungry delete, and then expand region. Uh, I still have to check out that aggressive indent. Maybe it's just not supported in Python, and I'm remembering it from when I was doing JavaScript development. Uh, I'll get back to that, but there were a couple of other things that I wanted to show that were that I think were really, really, really cool. Um, and one of them is iEdit. So uh, let me put iEdit in and then we'll show why it's so cool. So let's say, um, so it's going to be use package, iEdit, ensure true. Okay, that's it. And so uh, we're installing it. And that's it. So let's go to some document, you know, some file. We'll go to a buffer. Actually, let's go to the scratch buffer. Doesn't matter. And let's say we're writing some stuff like, uh, let's say we're writing a story, but this could be source code. Uh, uh, there was this guy named Harold. Uh, no one called him Harry, just Harold. Not the Harold with the purple crayon. I don't know. Not Harry, the Bigfoot with the Hendersons. Uh, that's capital Hendersons. Um, boy, is the story about Harold. And not Harry Lane. And that's the end of Harold's story. Okay. Um, so. Anyway, we can do certain things here, like we got Harold here. We know that we can use uh, control equals to expand region to mark the word. And I just think that's really cool. Uh, of course, if we just do it, then the period and then everything. So that's not always the best. Um, I guess if we had, on the other hand, if we had parens or quotes around this, um, you know, we did, uh, we got purple, the purple, the quote, whatever. Okay. Um, but anyway, so. What's cool is iEdit lets you, uh, well, let me show you. I think that's the best way. So let's say we're in Harold and we've marked Harold. If we do iEdit, uh, which is bound to control semicolon, notice that it's marked all of the Harolds. Um, and now I can do, thi I can say like, uh, you know, like, um, you know, whatever, Harold with an A. Okay, oh, I don't want to hit that. Uh, Harold, and then Control G to get out of this, and we've changed all the Harolds to Harold. Let's do that again. Let's uh, let's I edit this. Let's go Harold. Um, and that's really, really cool. It's really useful in terms of... Um, in terms of like if you're you're refactoring code, there are all these refactoring type tools that work for languages. Um, but a lot of the time, iEdit just gets the job done. Um, but the problem with iEdit is it's you know it's a little bit too coarse. Like if I only want to change these three these two lines of Harold's, but not the ones up here and down here, um, that's going to be a problem um, because I you know the um, the iEdit thing is going to grab all of them. And actually, before I show this, there are also other options. Um, obviously, you can do search and replace or query replace. There's a cool package called multiple cursors, which lets you bring up multiple cursors and then um, edit everything at once. So there are a lot of different ways of doing this, but I like iEdit because it's small and simple. Um, but the other feature that I used to not use so much, but now I use it all the time, is narrowing and widening. Um, and what narrowing does is narrowing lets you basically again well, let me show you with uh, let me show you so let's say I only want to deal with these two lines so I can mark them and I can say narrow to region and notice the keystroke control C control X and N and narrow to region and it gives me um, oh this is an unsafe command do you want to do it again um, I will enable it yes um, and enable future gallery extension yes and now this is my document. Um, everything is here. The stuff down here exists. The stuff up there exists. That doesn't look good on camera, actually. Um, and you can't see my hand on the screen. Um, but everything still exists above it and below it. But I'm only editing in this region. So now if I do, um, let's say, let's say Control Plus, and uh, let's say I change Harold to 
Anerald. Uh, oops, wrong keys. I'll do it. Arnold. Now I've changed those, and I can do Escape X Widen. And notice that those Harolds are now changed to Arnolds and nothing else. Uh, so let me actually change these back. Uh, let me just change back both Arnolds to Harolds. Uh, so that's a little bit better. Um, but anyway, that's really cool because you can now narrow to a region, do your stuff, and then widen it. It's not perfect. It doesn't do everything. Just take an eye. Okay, five minutes. Good. It's um, it, it doesn't solve real refactoring because if you have something like, um, you know, if you have Harold here and Harold, where's Harold? Harold here and Harold here, and we don't want this Harold, but we want this Harold down here. We want a disjoint set of Harolds. We want to get one, two, and four, but not three. This doesn't work, okay? This doesn't work in that way. But for my purposes, it works very well for a lot of cases. But I found on, um, on, on an Emacs blog, endless parentheses, which is really cool. I'm going to go over here, and I'm just going to... I'll just put this in the same miscellaneous, but I'll copy it out later on. So if you'll excuse me for a minute, I'm going to go off screen. And grab this code from endless parentheses, narrow or widen dwim, do what I mean as a function. And um, I'll put a link up to the post on this uh, on the on my blog post so you can get to the original. But it basically, you know, this do what I mean. When you see DWIM, it's you want to have one action to do what you're, you want to do. So let me actually evaluate this. I'll just evaluate the whole block again. Save it. And what it is, when I say do what I mean, so if I'm here, if I mark, let's say these two lines, and it's bound to control XN, so if I do control XN, it knows that I haven't, I'm in a, um, I'm in a full region, I'm in the entire document, it knows I have to narrow it, and now if I do control XN again, it knows that, oh, I'm narrowed, I have to widen it. So it'll narrow if it's wide, and it'll widen if it's narrowed. So now if I want to do that same operation again, I can do Control X and the narrow, and do whatever editing I want. So we'll do our, whoops, we'll do that, grab Harold. We'll go to, uh, grab Harold, we'll I edit Harold. We'll make Harold into Arnold. Ah, don't do enter there. Um, widen it, and we're in business. So narrowing and widening, really, really useful. That's which key popping up again. I don't know what I hit by mistake. Um, narrowing is also, I use this a lot also for like lesson planning. Um, I'm developing a class for um, at Hunter College here. I'm teaching the class, and I have an org mode file with little outlines of my lessons, and they're all in one file. And so what I do is I just, and I'll show you this at some point, um, what I do for each lesson is I quickly narrow the org mode file to that week's lesson. I export it to a LaTeX file, I print it out, and then I take it with me to class. All right, so that's everything for today. Um, I'll probably push this up now um, as is, but I will um, update it at some point, clean it up a little bit, make little different sections probably for this narrow or widen, do what I mean, um, and clean up the other stuff. But, um, and I do have to look up that aggressive indent. So as always, checking the time, eight minutes, nine minutes, okay. Um, hope you enjoy this. Um, do check out narrowing and widening. Do check out iEdit, both really, really, really useful. Um, I've got a lot of mileage out of them. Uh, please leave comments on the blog. Uh, please leave comments on, you know, anywhere really, but I like them on the blog because then they're safe for posterity. Um, you know, they're not in the silo. They're in somewhere that I can keep out there for everybody. Um, and again, I hope you guys get some useful stuff out of this. And um, yeah, so that's it. So uh, see you guys next time.